What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about five tips for making cleaner and more efficient Bitwig grid patches. I'm sure you like myself where you get to the point where you're just getting really creative in the grid and it starts to look like spaghetti. There's cables everywhere. And then when you save the patch, dive back in again at a later stage, you don't know what the heck is going on. So I want to give you five tips that can maybe help you clean up your patches, make them a little bit more readable when you jump in at a later stage. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So tip number one, I guess, is more of a visual thing. It's about creating patches that are kind of more, uh, I like to call them more like blocks, where you think of uh, individual operations in the patch and consider those like singular modules and kind of clump all of those things together in patch. So there's a couple of things that kind of make this a little bit easier to do. You could either use color schemes, um, some of the modules in the grid actually allow you to resize them. Some of them don't. Um, another nifty trick, I mean, this is, I guess, more visual, but sometimes you've got like these gaps here, which you know, just make it a little bit harder to read. Sometimes you just want one solid block. What you could do is you can go like this and then just give it a user-defined name of spacebar, and then just slot that in the block like this. Doing this kind of thing will just make it like, okay, this all handles one singular operation. We can go ahead and color all of those things in one particular color. And it just makes, uh, you know, reading the patch when we jump in here, we know exactly that this is all one singular operation. Furthermore, we can go in, drop a label over here or a little comment box, give us a little bit of an idea of exactly what's going on here. For example, we can say example one does some stuff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just sort this a little bit so you can kind of a little bit easy, so it's a little bit easier to read. Because here, for example, when we're fully zoomed out, stuff happening all over the place, you know, we have to zoom around to be actually able to play match, which is not ideal. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and uh, fast forward this part. Okay, so as you can see, it's just a little bit easier to read. Things are like, you know, all the effects are in a single place. We've got a label there that tells us that that's the effects. So let's look at some of the ideas for cleaning up the interface. You know, say for example, we've got parts here where we have, you know, cables running over cables. It's a little bit hard to see kind of what's going on. Uh, there's several ways of dealing with this. I like to uh, create what I call buses. So you can pretty much take any module that's like an attenuate or level or something like that, and just use those as a kind of router, kind of like choose where you want to put the cable. So here, for example, you can kind of like, say you want the cable to go this way around, just so you know, you can kind of much easier see the signal flow, kind of do that. And then say, for example, we've got this one here and kind of run these almost like a bus, you know, where we have these ones together like this. And as you can see, they're kind of like just a little bit easier to read when we look at this. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, creating things like this, but wirelessly. So I wouldn't suggest doing this with audio. I mean, it works. Every time I've done it, it works because obviously the modulation system in Bitwig is supposed to be sample accurate. Um, however, it's not something that I would recommend just because I would generally just use this for modulation and that kind of thing. But like I said, it does work for audio. So how do we do this? Let's create a value and let's create a modulator out. So what we want to do is we essentially want to send audio rate into this modulator and receive it on the value. But here, what we need to do is set this into bipolar. So what's going to happen is it's going to uh, receive uh, audio rate both up and down into the negative and positive domain. So if we send this audio into the modulator output, then whatever we send this value into is going to receive that signal on the other side. So here, let's go ahead and actually just remove the that and then send this value where that was going. Let's solo this channel on this mixer over here so we can just test the theory. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's set it up for this channel as well over here. Set up the modulator. Here we can send this in there. there. And we've created that wireless link. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is using the stereo merge and split. 
to create a kind of encode and decode system to be able to send two signals down a single cable. So obviously, because Bitwix Grid is stereo, it can basically automatically work out whether a signal is mono or stereo and do all sorts of calculations on that accordingly. We can kind of hack this system to be able to send two signals down a single audio path and then decode it on the other side. So what we need is we need the emerge and the split and uh, no, stereo merge and stereo split. So just for argument's sake, we don't need to do it on these, but I'm gonna do it on these channels just because I've got these two here. You know, we got them wirelessly anyway. But I'm gonna send this into the left channel and this into the right channel. And then with the merge, I'm gonna basically send the left channel into where that destination was coming from and the right channel into where that destination was. Coming. And then we can just send this one cable like this. Now what we've done is we basically told Bitwig that this channel is on the left, this channel is on the right, and then it automatically splits those channels and then decodes it on this side and sends them to the according mixer channels. The one thing that might confuse you here is there's already panning on this mixer, so I'm just gonna turn this off so we can double check that both channels are coming through. So that brings up the obvious question, does this work on stereo signals? No, it only works on mono signals because obviously we've taken advantage of the fact that um, Bitwig uh, has this kind of stereo encode and we can do that with uh, modulation signals. So if you, for example, want to have like a pitch and a gate being sent through one table, which is, you know, most of the time where I'd find this uh, to be useful, situations like that where you have pitch and gate, you want to send them as like a MIDI signal instead can do that then just decode it on the other side um, but we can actually set it up here as well we have another channel where we have two channels going up here so let's just send the left and right like this Send this input from here created that single cable carrying two channels Okay, so the next example that I wanna talk about is mainly for when you have uh, sequences like this. So you have like an arpeggiator or something like this. You wanna create several different layers of that sequence. So you want it to create like a really complex uh, modulation patch. So instead of just like control and, you know, creating a whole bunch of different sequences and a whole bunch of different arpeggiator creators and that kind of thing, we can make use of Bitwig's really, really cool uh, voice stacking modulation system. So in the latest version, 5.1 beta, they've actually added a whole bunch of extra voices. So five isn't the cap anymore, but you know, it does, uh, it is pretty intensive on the CPU. So I'm gonna stick to smaller numbers for this video, but just remember you can kind of take it to the nth degree uh, with the latest beta date. Uh, but that being said is uh, the concept is still very simple. So essentially what we're doing with the voice stacking system is you're basically creating a duplicate of your patch and they're playing as two separate voices, and then you're modulating any parameters that you wanna split across those voices. Say for example, you want to have one voice panned left, one voice panned right, then you modulate the pan parameter with a voice stack. Uh, the really, really insane thing about this is that it works on the phase signal of sequences as well. So you can do this with note grid, you can do this with any type of step sequencer. So what I mean by this is, yeah, for example, we have these uh, various different kind of uh, phase systems here, these kind of like different modulations. So what these do is these basically change how the phase signal sends to the sequencer. So just by default, it's gonna send forward, but if we use this reverse phase effect, what it's gonna do is it's gonna play backward. So imagine if we had two voices, one playing forwards and one playing backwards. It's actually incredibly easy to set up using the voice stack system. What we do is we set up a merge like this. We send the reverse into one side and the straightforward phase into the other side, send it to the destination. And this input over here is basically gonna choose from these two inputs over here. 
if we send this a value, what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to change whether the sequence is playing forwards or backwards. And various settings in between where it, begets, where it gets really, really interesting. So for now, let's just stick with the two. What we want to do is we want to go over here and we put a voice stack modulator. We want to set this to voice stack of two in the inspector panel over here. And then if we just modulate this parameter over here, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically create two voices. One is going to be backwards, one is forwards. Remember, this can apply to anything that we add into the grid. So, for example, if we add in a uh, dice, we can create a split out and send this dice various different outputs. So, let's say, for example, I want to set up modulators here. We can modulate the decay and the back. And here we send the same value. So, now what's going to do is it's going to send a random value but to different voices. And we can also just put in simple stuff like octavers and send this to each input over here. Then we can modulate it with a voice stack over here. So this gets really, really cool when we add extra voices and when we slow down the uh, speed. And then, for example, we can actually change this to a probabilities. And then we're going to get more of a randomized approach to the triggers. So then here, for example, let's set this to an eighth. And then let's increase the voice stack in the inspector to five. So now it's going to interpolate these values. We're going to have one going forwards and backwards at full speed, one kind of going slower. In fact, you know what, let's, let's set it to four so that we have, you know, two and two. Let's add a filter in here as well. Add a bunch of effects. Okay, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So I'm going to be uploading both of these presets to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. Also, keep in mind that I recently just released a Bitwig Masterclass. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the links in the description. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.